Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're gonna talk about the comic book industry. We're gonna talk about Substack. Uh, Substack being the blogging platform that was throwing ridiculous money at comic book creators last year to come to the platform and basically create web comics, right? You, you guys heard about that. They were going out and spent a lot of money on uh, Marvel and DC creators, uh, some people that worked in animation, it was a huge, huge deal. I mean, this is just September of last year. Uh, September of last year, they were paying people millions of dollars to come to the platform, uh, create their own IP, and then they could take those creations to whatever whatever publisher they wanted to. They owned it. Uh, it seemed like a very one-sided deal, honestly. I mean, this was basically Substack throwing some money around to try to build itself up as a, a comic book publisher. But now, uh, something's going on. And I'm not exactly sure what's going on with Substack, but it does seem like they're they're not talking about comics as much as they, they used to. Uh, there are rumors that Nick Spencer, who was running Substack Comics, is no longer there. It feels like they might be winding down. Uh, again, disclaimer, uh, we have actually, and we know some people over at Substack, we've actually talked to some people at Substack. Uh, we had considered for a while maybe taking our own comics content uh, over to Substack, and I think they have a pretty good crew over there overall. But uh, as far as the comics end of things go, I have no idea what's going on. In fact, there was a lot of radio silence over there, and uh, so there's definitely something up at Substack. But I, I do uh, I do want to get out that I, I have a lot of respect for the platform overall because they've been uh, apolitical. They're one of the few platforms that uh, has stuck to their guns to make sure that everybody gets a voice, even if they personally don't agree with those voices. Uh, they've they've let some uh, canceled personalities uh, you know, blog over there and they basically leave it up to the reader's discretion, you know, um, and it's just an apolitical platform. Now, that being said, they've apparently hit a, a rough patch. They've been laying off uh, workers. Um, Yahoo says that they laid off 14% of their workforce, and this was last month. So it does, it does make sense that uh, they would be cutting back on comics as well, because I don't think comics brings as many people to the platform as uh, blogging does. So we'll see what happens. I know, you know, Twitter, man, they've really gone after Substack uh, because of the fact that they're apolitical. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, over 273,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, check us out at clownfishtv.com where there's more news that we don't talk about here on uh, YouTube. So... Rich Johnston, rumor monger Rich Johnston, uh, put this article up this morning. And I have to give a hat tip to CCG for sending this over. Uh, Bleeding Cool said they heard some gossip, some gossip about the future of Substack, uh, set up by Nick Spencer last year with a comic book publisher with comic book publishing deals set for major comic book creators. Yeah, they were going after Marvel and DC people predominantly, and they were giving them very good deals. The word was that Nick Spencer had been fired and. B, Substack Comics was being shuttered. From what we can gather, it's not all true, but there is a nugget of truth that may have been blown up. So let's see what's going on here. They, they have brought in a lot of people. Uh, Molly Ostertag, Chip Zdarsky, so Sophie Campbell, uh, Scott Snyder, Donnie Cates, Ryan Stegman. A lot of, a lot of uh, pretty big names in comics and you know some other people that are in animation or whatever. But uh, yeah, they were absolutely... Um, throwing big money, big, big money at the, these creators. And they were jumping ship very easily, I might add. They were jumping ship from DC and Marvel because I think they knew the ship was sinking with the mainstream. Uh, very clear that the ship is sinking with uh, mainstream direct market comics. And so when somebody throws some money your way and says, hey, we'll give you, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, come over here bring your stuff over here. Oh, well, do you own it? No. No, actually, you get to keep your creation. We're going to pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars just to publish on our platform for a while. It's a hell of a deal. And it I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think it was ever meant to be a long-term thing. I think it was meant to uh, kick things off. But now that they're having financial problems, they're laying people off. Uh, you know, it looks like the money might be running out for comics. So this is what Rich Johnson said. He said he looked into the gossip. This is what he's been able to ascertain. Uh, Nick Spencer is no longer a staff member at Substack, but is now fulfilling his previous role in a freelance capacity, including an upcoming Substack 
uh, Comics Project. I thought it was Co Mike's Project. Comics Project. The year one Substack Comics Pro deals are coming to an end. This I knew. Uh, this I knew firsthand. And I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth is we were actually talking to them. Uh, the truth is I actually have my agent talking to them. Um, and then the talks just stopped. So, so we actually know firsthand it, 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 uh, definitely there was a change over there and that they're, they're winding that down year one, uh, comics projects, right? It was originally planned and the Substack pro deals will switch from those large six figure advance payments against subscription royalties to no advances, but with Substack taking 10% of subscription figures. This is how the deal was always promoted. Yeah. So Webtoon did this too. Webtoon basically threw money at people to get them to come to the platform. Um, and now the deal is since the platform has, has become established, the deal is you go to Webtoon, you put your stuff out there. If it gets big enough, you're eligible for, um, you know, ad revenue share. You're eligible for, I don't know if they're doing the Patreon thing anymore. They were doing like a Patreon, um, uh, bonus that they would give to people if you hit certain views every month, which we were, we were in that program when we had shadow binders on, on webtoon. Uh, and we would get, I mean, it wasn't terrible. It was like, I mean, we basically just would rerun our, our comic over there after it had run on our main site and we'd pick up a couple thousand dollars a month, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't a bad deal at the time. Now I don't even think that's around, but yeah, they were at one point in time, literally throwing advances at people, paying people to come to the platform, which is what they had to do with Substack too. Of course, you know, you want to get some big names. You want to pull them away from Marvel and DC. You're going to have to throw money at them. The problem is, is that I don't know how people who read predominantly print comics you know, Marvel and DC print comics are going to, you know, how they would feel about going to reading digital comics is basically a blog, a paid blog. Uh, your two creators, aside from Kelly Sue DeConnick and Matt Fraction, are soon to be named. I have been led to expect fewer numbers than before, and both the amounts of deals and size of the deals have been significantly reduced. Um, yeah, so there are, there are some people, I'm sure, in the program uh, still people they were talking to before, again, Marvel and DC people. But um, yeah, we'll talk about, you know, the problems they're having over there. And I, I just want to be clear. Again, we know people at Substack. I actually do like the platform. Um, I, I love that they've stuck to their guns, you know, so this isn't anything on them. But I knew something was up. Yeah, we, we couldn't really say anything about it, but I'm like, this, this is weird. There's a lot of radio silence and something, something's going on here. Something's going on here. He said, um, Substack, like Netflix, Amazon, and other streaming services, is going through a numbers crunch in an increasingly divided competitive market that hasn't had a shakeout yet. Substack suffered a lot with layoffs. We're going to talk about that um, here. So Substack laid off 14% of workforce as CEO says market is increasingly uncertain. A lot of companies, what they're doing right now is they're kind of preemptively laying people off. They're battening down the hatches. Um, and we're seeing this with a lot of the news organizations too. They're basically like, you know, what is the skeleton crew that we need to get through this recession? And that's what we're going to do. And they're also going to use the recession as an excuse to get rid of people that were a pain in the ass, as we saw with Kickstarter, uh, you know, last year or the year before with the pandemic. And as we're seeing with Netflix now, they're like, these people are problematic. Uh, they're a pain in the ass. They're activists. They're never happy. And they're not bringing anything to the table. So let's kill these deals, fire these people. We'll be better off for it in a couple of years, right? Um, they said they laid off 13 people out of the 90 employees they have in response to difficult economic conditions. Again, you're paying for a blog. You're paying for blog content. And you know people are going to start cutting subscriptions loose as things get tight. The company didn't specify whether those employees being let go came from different departments or what their roles entailed. In a note to employee CEO Chris Best cited prioritizing revenue growth during an increasingly uncertain economy. Will hire at a slower pace as they prepare for challenging conditions that could last years. Again, they're, they're battening down the hatches. So uh, Comics Beat was asking about it at the beginning of the month, which I completely missed. I mean, we knew there were problems with Comixology. We knew there were problems definitely with Oni Press and Lion Forge, but all the way at the bottom of this article, Substack, um, this is some grim tidings with 13 of its 19 employees getting laid off following a failure to get more venture capital. Last month, the layoffs affected mostly support staff and reflected a plan to get uh, to get on by by their actual profits. Um, layoffs don't seem to have directly touched Substack's comics publishing program the way the deals are set up. 
But uh, no, they have. They actually have. I, I can tell you that uh, I do believe that they are bringing people on still and they're giving them some money. I don't think they're giving them the, uh, the crazy amounts of money that they were last year. And uh, most of the people that are being brought on, I'm sure, are going to be Marvel and DC people just because for some reason they think that's, that's the audience that reads uh, digital comics. But I can tell you there's definitely something going on over there, and they're definitely um, cutting back on their spending. They actually still want us on the platform. We talked to them. They still want us on the platform, but they weren't going to give us an advance. I'm like, well, there's really no incentive <laughs> for us to go over. I'm sorry. We'll have to think about that. I, I mean, if our audience was like, hey, guys, go to Substack. We'll support you on Substack. I would, I would consider it. But I don't think a lot of you are really clamoring uh, for us to go to Substack. Anyway, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.